Hello children, it's Miss Campbell here and today I have a story I would like to share with you. This story is called How to Not Go to School. It is written by Mike Ford and illustrated by Rebecca Sampson. Chapter 1 How to Not Go to School Sunday the 29th of March 2020 I'm very good at not going to school. I've done it every single day of my life. First, I wake up, get dressed and feed my animals. Alfred the Great, our very fat cat, Parsley, my imaginary guinea pig, Molly Womble and Maximilian Ironbelly II, my two real guinea pigs, Einstein and Meatball, the dogs, Stichosaurus, the stick insect, Diane, Pam and Anne, the nanny goats. Next, I feed me. I brush my teeth and then I don't go to school. For some of you, it might be a little more tricky. You've been going to school so long that it's seeped into your bones. You have times tables tatted on your brain and your belly rumbles whenever the lunch bell rings. You'll have to remember to not put on your school uniform and not pick up your pat lunch. You need to not go through the front door, not walk down the street, not cross the road with the lollipop lady and absolutely, definitely not say good morning to your teacher. And that's all before school's even started. Then you have to spend all day concentrating on not listening to what your teacher is saying. I'm Parsley Mimblewood, by the way, and I've never been to school, not once. I've never put my hand up to answer a question. I've never run a race on sports day and never eaten a school dinner. Instead, I learn things at home with my mum and my little brother Bo. Things like how to milk, a grumpy nanny goat, and how to extract the healing properties of crystals. We live in a little ramshackle cottage at the end of a windy narrow lane in the middle of the moors, just beyond Wensleydale. It's so far from anywhere that whenever a car drives past, we all come running out to say hello. It's so far that it would take hours to get to school and back. And anyway, my mum says they don't teach you the important stuff at school like understanding the truth about crystals. She really likes crystals. Anyway, now nobody is going to school. So today, on Sunday the 29th of March 2020, I have decided to write a book for you all. A book to explain exactly how to not go to school. Chapter 2. How to care for your grown-ups. Monday the 30th of March 2020. This morning, I was woken up by a dripping sound. Our roof has a lot of holes in it because our cottage is really old and tumble down. And when it rains, we have to gather up all of the buckets and bowls and bottles to put underneath the drips. I don't mind the drip, drip, dripping because it makes our house sound like a deep, dank cave. But when we're all stuck inside together, everyone starts to go a bit crazy. By the time I got up, Bo had already knocked over three bottles and spilt a bowl of Cheerios across the floor. I had to hop between the shrinking islands of dry, crunchy cereal to avoid my slippers getting covered in soggy Cheerio mush. Bo was being a very good boy because he was already cleaning up his mess by picking up and eating the dry Cheerios from the floor. I poured myself a bowl, but before I could get the spoon to my mouth, my mum had rushed in, shouting things like, Don't let your brother eat food off the floor! Where's my phone charger? Oh, now I've got mush on my slippers. I tried to explain that she should hop between the dry islands of cereal, but she wasn't having any of it. By then, her phone was plugged in and one eye was gazed over her screen whilst the other eye was glaring at me, even though it was Bo's mess. After a few moments, she tore herself away from her screen and sighed. I think we've got a serious case of cabin fever. Cabin fever is what happens when we all feel cooped up from being trapped together in our little house for too long. And as soon as someone says cabin fever, we all start singing I got cabin fever from the Muppets Treasure Island. We've had cabin fever so often that I've learned all the words and can do all the voices. Unfortunately, Bo hasn't learned all the words yet. He's only got He only knows that I got cabin fever line, and in fact, he thinks it's I got gabageeba. 
Mum and I cleared up the cereal, but Bo was still singing Gabba Giba again and again, and Mum had gone back to her phone. So I thought I'd go and feed the animals before the cabin fever got any worse. Whilst I was feeding the animals, I made an incredible discovery. Looking after animals is just like looking after grown-ups with cabin fever. Grown-ups are like dogs. Just like the dogs, grown-ups must be taken for regular walks. Otherwise, they start pacing up and down the house muttering to themselves. Grown-ups are like cats. Our cat, Alfred the Great, is on a special diet from the vet because he eats too much. And when mum's stuck inside, I need to stop her from snacking too. Or else she'll have eaten all the snacks and there won't be any left for me. Grown-ups are like guinea pigs. Guinea pigs don't do very much. Even imaginary guinea pigs are a little bit boring. But they do give very good cuddles. I found that a short cuddle is a surefire cure for grown-ups who have caught a bad case of cabin fever. Grown-ups are like stick insects. It's very easy looking after a stick insect, but sometimes I worry that Stichosaurus might be a little lonely without any other stick insects. There's at least two of everything else. Even I've got Bo, although he can be very annoying sometimes. But Mum doesn't have any other grown-ups in our house. Maybe that's why she spends all day blabbering on the phone about crystals. Grown-ups are like goats. We've got a copy of the RSPCA guidebook for keeping goats. Well, we've got all the pages apart from 45 to 52 because Diane the goat ate them. Anyway, the guidebook says that goats must not be tethered. Even though they're fantastic at escaping, you shouldn't tie goats up because it can hurt their necks. My mum's phone is always needing charging up, so sometimes she sits for hours stuck to the wall staring at pictures of crystals and looking at the news just like a tethered goat. I decided that my mum needed some looking after, so I hid her phone charger at the bottom of Bo's toy box. This ticked off most of her needs because she was exercising by rushing round the house. She wasn't tethered to her phone and she got a hug from Bo when he said sorry for putting her charger in his toy box. I felt a bit guilty about getting Bo into trouble and also my plan only seemed to make the cabin fever worse because by lunchtime everyone was grumpy with everyone else. That's why I've now decided to hold an official family meeting. Here's the agenda I made for the meeting. Official family meeting, attendees, me, Bo, Mum, Alfred the Great, the cat, Stichosaurus, the stick insect. Discussion points. What are the symptoms of cabin fever? How to avoid catching cabin fever? What to do if you suspect you or a fam a member of your household has cabin fever? What should you do if everyone has cabin fever? Any other business? <laughs>